Shaheen, it's been a very um, momentous time as well in, in, in terms of uh, celebrating an iconic film, which you've been a part of, which I have been obsessed with all my life. Um, and that's, of course, Bend It Like Beckham, which is soon going to be celebrating 20 years. I can't believe it's literally got to that, that 20 year stage. It's just crazy. Um, now, at the time of release, it was such a unique insight into an Indian girl playing football in Britain, as well as challenging various gender stereotypes as well. So how do you feel the film bears resonance with today's society and the way we view um, genders as well? Um, well, I think things are much better in some ways and almost not moved in some other ways, you know? Things have just sort of... It, for example, I went to see a screening of a TV film that I did called Flight by Tanika Gupta. Oh, yes, yes. And it was the closing night, you know, uh, film for the London Indian Film Festival. Yes, yes. And, you know, we did that in 1995. And I had thought when they said, oh, we're going to be screening this, I was like, oh, interesting. I wonder how it bears up to, you know, all this time gone by. But it really stood up to the test of time subject matter, domestic violence, you know, um, females not being allowed to pursue their, you know, um, dreams. dreams and all that kind of stuff. And it was so relevant still today. Mm. So, I mean, on the one hand, like, you know, I went to, um, after Bendit, I went to my old school and I'd done a TV series when I was at school at six, age 16 called Barossi with Zora Segal, Russian Seth, you know, it was a oh, start wow. of cast, Indra Joshi. And my school didn't care. Nobody cared. Mm -hmm. In fact, I managed to get one O level because I only used to go to uh, school on Friday. And they decided that wasn't good enough. So they actually called my father in and said, maybe I would be better off somewhere else, you know. Oh, so nobody cared. But when I went off the Bendit to just have a chat with the girls at my old school, you know, the focus was all about empowering the girls. And I honestly, I couldn't help it. I was so overwhelmed with emotion. I started to cry because I was like, wow, I didn't get any of that, you know. And it's so brilliant that these young women now have so much support. It's fantastic. Hmm. Now, this reaction is very interesting um, because you obviously played um, Mrs. Bamro, who is the very stereotypical Indian mother who is very much stuck in her ways um, and is very, very conscious of society, of culture as well. Um, but yet somewhere down the line, I think you, you were also Jess. You were also Jess Minder as well. So did you ever feel that sort of dichotomy, that sort of uh, juxtaposition when you were playing Mrs. Bamro too? Yeah, I mean, I do. But also, like, sometimes um, as an actor, you come to a script and you feel like there's a beat missing somewhere because you want to make her real because she's written, you know, she's comedic and, you know, um, she is sort of her, her views are slightly um, parochial and all that. And, you know, she's very much embedded in the um, sort of, you know, mentality, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, but I wanted to find like the humanity in her. So actually Anupam and I, we were just waiting for them to light um, one of the scenes. And it was in Jesse's bedroom. And we were just sitting on the bed. There was, I can't remember what the actual, we were just sitting there for it to be lit. And, and I, I just started improvising just as you do as actors, you know, you just get into your role. So I said to Anupa, you know, something like, you know, what, what, what didn't we give her sort of thing or whatever, you know? Yes. Yeah. And so Gorinda was listening to it and she said, we're going to shoot that. We're going to shoot that improvisation. Because for me, it felt like that beat was so necessary to make this woman not just, you know, because our mums aren't just that. They're not just, you know, whatever mine was. <laughs> she was more than that. She was, you know, she, she, it's, there was a lot of love. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to bring that to Mrs. Bumrah mm -hmm. because ultimately she does come around, you know. 
and and in flight as well. You know, she she's this Bengali woman who is very much in that kind of arranged marriage, has come over to this country, works hard, is not really given any oxygen in the household. You know, the, the, uh, the patriarchy is very strong. Mm -hmm. And, but she has three daughters mm -hmm. and she works. So you can tell there's something about this woman. She saves money, you know, um, and, and it looks like for a rainy day kind of thing. And when her daughter is beaten to, you know, a pulp, mm -hmm. and it's, she, her mother actually helps her to escape. Yeah. You know? yeah. So these women who, who, when you look at them, when they're just walking around the streets, most often I think they're quite invisible, but actually they're also really strong. Yeah. You know? I, you know what, I really like this, and we're going to come back to Benny like Beckham, but since we're talking about this, I think this is a very, very good um, way to segue into this question about um, the sort of films you've been a part of as well. Um, I think you've always been in projects which revolve around strong female characters. I mean, be it Provoked, be it Bended Like Beckham, be it Party on the Beach and Flight as well, for that matter. So has this something you've been consciously... Um, proactive in in terms of like choosing these products or have they just come your way um I think I've been it's been um uh, um sometimes they just come my way sometimes I really pursue them like bend it like Beckham oh they did not want me really because really? they thought I was too young yeah they thought I I was too young uh-huh and I just knew in my gut that I could bring so much to that mother. I just felt it. It was almost, you know, like something coming out from up there. Just honestly. So I asked Gurinder to, you know, I actually I bumped into her in a uh, in a Chinese restaurant in Soho. Mm -hmm. And so I said, hi, you know, and she was with Deepak, who was the producer. And I said, oh, what are you up to? You know, so they said, we're, uh, we're going to be doing this film. Um, you're too young to play the girl. Um, no, you're too young to play the mum, and you're too old to play the girl. Oh, right. So I was like, please, please, let me, let me be seen for it, right? Mm -hmm. So Gurinder was like, no, you're too young. And I said, no, I'll, I want to play the mum, you know. And uh, eventually she, she called me for an audition. So I borrowed a friend's mum's salwar kameez. <laughs> some proper Indian chapels that they were. And I schlepped up to Highbury and Islington in this outfit. And I went and did the audition. And still they came back, oh, you're a bit young, you know. Anyway, so then they called me in again and... I went in again, again, it was like, you're too young. And then apparently the story is that they took the tapes to LA and they were all in a hotel and it was between myself and another actress and they kept putting the tapes in and voting basically. And I think the producer's wife had the final vote and she gave it to me. Wow, wow. So did they, did they ever actually have anyone else in mind that they wanted to play the role or, were, or was it just by auditions that they were sort of judging from I think they were auditioning people okay. and so there was somebody else who looked older mm -hmm. but I was like there's no way because <laughs> also there was the Punjabi you know yeah that you had to kind of um work around and I really felt like I would be able to do that although it was hard it wasn't easy yeah, because the way you say it as well, it's like, even if it's just the little things like the high rub and, you know, and also, you know, like even when you have like sort of phrases like that, it seemed very, very organic. So I guess Gurinder must have been quite a, um, a help in that in that sense as well at that point to sort of guide you in that direction too, right? Actually, the, Gurinder's mum. Ah, I have to to her because she really, like Tanika's mum in Flight, Gurinder's mum in Bend It really helped me to get kind of the warmth and the kind of um, the culture, the language, uh, all of that, all of both of them did that for me. And I'll never forget that. It was brilliant. 
Yeah. And of course, Gurinder herself, you know, she's 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 great. She she she'll she'll mm -hmm. she'll help you along with the language and all that as well. Mm, right. And what's also very interesting is I realized that those very, very few scenes I think that you had with with Kira, Kira Knightley as well. And that was like her first film. And I think the way her career has panned out post that is amazing. But somewhere down the line, you know, honestly, Shaheen, it kind of hurts that I wish that Parminder also got that same level of recognition, you know, and I think she mentioned this as well recently in like an yeah. interaction as well. I mean, do you do you feel like, um, do you think that had a film like Bendela Beckham been made now and had the whole situation been now, do you think Parminder maybe, and maybe some of the other actors as well in the film would have got that level of recognition that they would have deserved, do you think? Yeah, I definitely think so. I mean, uh, if Parminder and... Um, Archie, of course, went on to, you know, uh, Hollywood and all that. Um, but the level of success and and um, acknowledgement, you know, definitely would be much more now, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, even when, when I went to the screening of Flight, in fact, I never really blow my own trumpet because I always hear my mum's voice going, no, you know, don't show off, don't, you know, because <laughs> it'll always be if you do anything like that, you, you'll, you know, fall flat on your face sort of thing. But I did watch the screening and I did think that my my performance was really powerful. That's the first time I ever had set, acknowledged it. Maybe it's because so much time had passed so I was able to watch the film. But, you know, one of the most wonderful things for me that, uh, someone who'd watched the film that evening said, you know, there were a couple of scenes where I just thought I was watching a Satyajit Ray oh, character. Wow. And yeah. for me, like, I I love his, all his work, you know. So that was a huge, um, yeah, it was really lovely to hear that. But, and what I w wanted to say was, somebody had said, oh, Roshan won an award for his performance, right? And I couldn't help it. I said, actually, I think that mother should have won something as well. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, totally. And actually, uh, even in Bend It, you know, now I look back on that performance and, and the mother is such an iconic character. Very, very you know, iconic. There are memes and there are this and that. And, <laughs> she, you know, people love her. I remember when we f finished doing the film uh, at a screening and all these Asian women, they came up to me and they said, oh, my God, that was my mum. And that was my mum, my mum, you know. And I said, yes, she was all our mums, you know. <laughs> and, and it was, and, you know, I think most people thought that they'd pick someone off out the community to come and just do this little turn. It's so true. Honestly, yeah. the, the opening scene where I think you're telling Jasminda and Pinky to go uh, to the to the to the market and get some dhania. And then you, yeah. And then you also say I'm making achar. And they're like, don't make pickle as well. And she's like, am I asking you to, to make it? Like, literally, that's my mom. <laughs> literally. <laughs> that particular scene. I'm so glad somebody actually noticed it or remembered it or whatever, you know, because it was like 85, 90 degrees that day. I had this real nylon the down, you know, and I had to come up from upstairs, downstairs, turn the corner, go to the kitchen, peel carrots, right? It was really, really a hard shot to get in one. And I had to peel the carrot up here for the camera, right? Because wow. that's what you have to do, you know? You might be like this, but on camera, it looks great. <laughs> <laughs> um. But I remember, you know, I mean, the stick I got for, you know, just sort of forgetting my lines or not having the thing up here and, you know, but we did it in eight takes. And I'm like, really? Wow. That's not that much. Yeah, it's incredible. I think what was incredible was because there were, you know, I'd worked with Paminda before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of us had worked together before mm -hmm. on stage. And I really think there was this wonderful, exciting feeling of family. I mean, genuinely. And we were so excited because I remember when we did the read through mm -hmm. and at the read through, you know, um, it was so wonderful because people were laughing so much. And at the end, and crew never come up and say anything about, 
you know, what they thought about it. But so many of them came up and said, that was so funny or that was great. It was, there was a real buzz about it. Mm-hmm. We didn't know what was going to happen to this film, but I just remember at that read-through feeling a real buzz. But it wasn't about, oh, it's going to make a, a huge successful film or anything, but it was mm-hmm. like, God, this is a great project to be on, you know? And I and I'm I feel very fortunate that, you know, mm-hmm. I was. Definitely. And I think even the fact that you worked with uh, Zora Segalji again and Gurinder again after Bhaji on the Beach as well. Um, yeah. So I think that was also quite, that must have been quite, because it was only a few years apart as well, I think, um, when both the films were made. So I'm sure you probably had a lot of fun on set, I'm sure, sort of gelling with each other. I first worked with Zora when I was 16 on Perusi, right? Right, of course. This was in 1976. Mm-hmm. And um, she was fabulous. And then I got to work with her on Bhaji on the Beach. And I learned so much from her. You know, I always say that sometimes when I'm on set, I feel like Zora channels herself in me. I really do. Especially when I want to moan and groan and complain and all that. Because when we were doing Bhaji on the Beach, it was a very low budget film. Yeah. And we were in Blackpool and it was cold. And... um, you know, it was grueling. And sometimes we'd be on location somewhere and there was nowhere for us actors. There was no green room or anything. It might be a room where there's costume and, you know, everything together. And Zora would be lying on the floor having a rest. And I'd get so upset on her behalf. I'd be like, come on, you could at least get her a little, you know, what are those bendy beds, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, and she was like, it's fine, it's fine. I'm absolutely fine on this floor, you know? I'm all right. And I thought, wow. And, you know, when we, we, we used to go um, touring, mm-hmm. I learned to just sleep anywhere, on a chair, under a table, on hard seats, just because... That is how she conserved her energy that she needed for her performance, because ultimately that is what matters. As Anupam said, it's what is happening there. That's the most important thing. Nothing there, nothing there, nothing behind. Just there. So, yeah. That is that is so incredible. In fact, I wanted to speak more about you as an actor as well, um, especially about your background too. I mean, you were, I believe, born in Tanzania. Yeah. Um, to in and brought up yeah. here in England. So having experienced multiple sort of cultures in that sense, um, how do you feel this has impacted you and perhaps the way you approach work as an actor? Um, I When I did Barossi and didn't do that well at school, I went to uh, Kingston College or further education, right? Mm-hmm. And at that time, I was desperate to uh, join a drama you know, because I'd done TV and I wanted to tra- join a dramatic company. And all the ones I went to locally were all white. This is 1979. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they were like, OK, you can do backstage or whatever. And I was like, no, I want to be on stage, uh, front of stage. Anyway, so then a friend of mine came one day, my sister's friend, and she brought a Time Out magazine. And at the back, it said, Thara Arts Group were looking for people, you know, to Uh come to the community centre to do drama. Mm -hmm. Of course, I was like, wow. Okay, so I went. And, you know, at the time, we were all sort of struggling between wanting freedom, wanting to stay at home and be wonderful kids as well. And you were kind of feeling really split the white world didn't want you, your parents sometimes didn't want you, you know? And so for me, when I joined Thara, I was like, wow, I've come home. I mean, this is my home. There are people who think like me, you know? Mm -hmm. We were Hindu, Muslims, all all kinds, but we were a solid group of people, you know? Mm -hmm. And, And we wanted to address all the issues, the racism from the whites, the, um, you know, all the isms from our families, you know, uh, lack of freedom, all that kind of stuff. Um, 
so it was a really, really exciting time. And I think that is where I became political in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, had I not joined Thar Arts, I think I would have just, I don't know. I don't know what I would have done. <laughs> I probably, I don't know. I had thought of becoming a teacher or, a, you know, social worker or something, right? Um, your work as an actor has been quite fascinating, even uh, in theatre as well. I mean, in fact, it's quite interesting because I came across this article, I think back from 2015, um, when you were doing the Desi version of Macbeth, you played Lady Macbeth. And I think that was your actual first time where you were playing a Shakespearean theatre on stage. I mean, you've done learned monologues and stuff like that before, but that was your first time actually playing a Shakespearean character, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, I I remember I got the call from Jatinder Jatinder Verma, who used to run Thara, and um, he said, uh, how would you like to, be, I'm doing Macbeth, uh, would you like to be Lady Macbeth? And my stomach just did a massive flip, like I wanted to throw up. <laughs> I was so scared, right? Mm. I'd never done Shakespeare. And then to get Lady Macbeth, you know, uh, I was, I just wanted to say, no, I can't. And I thought, OK, this is your chance, because I'd always wanted to play Lady Macbeth. Because once Kenneth Branagh was doing like Henry V or something, and I auditioned for him. And I was really young. I didn't know anything about Shakespeare at all. And I I thought, oh, flick through, oh, Lady Macbeth, she's a woman. (laughs) (laughs) Learned the speech, didn't know what I was doing, went and did it in front of him. Of course, I didn't get the job, right? But I loved that speech. And so when I, 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 I just thought, don't think, just say yes, and then think how you'll do it, mm-hmm. which is what I did. And, you know, I went to the, uh, I'd, I'd been to the National, so I got in touch with the voice coach from the National, and she helped me a bit, and, you know, and, and I did it. And it's so funny because I thought, if I ever, ever survive this, I will never be afraid of anything else in my life. <laughs> really? Wow. And you did survive it, didn't you? <laughs> I did, but I'm so scared of things. God bless you. Well, I mean, it's natural. I think Dar ke aage jeet hai, as uh, him saying in yeah. his videos. I mean, you know, I mean, I had breast cancer and I remember as I was going under, I just, I was looking up and I thought, I will never be afraid of another audition in my life, you know? Mm. And of course... I am. <laughs> oh, bless you. It's just human. It's just human nature, isn't it? To it, it stays. It's like antibodies. It stays for a while, yeah. oh. <laughs> and then uh, the fear comes back again. Mm-hmm. I mean, Maybe it's a know, good thing. I yeah, I, I'm really. You know what? Thank you so much for sharing that, Shaheen. Actually, with us because obviously you had to take a bit of a break. You know, because you were combating breast cancer, and you know, oh. I mean. I, I've had family members as well who have sadly passed on from that and uh, from cancer itself. And I know it's a very, very deadly disease. Um, but I think when life throws such a curveball at you, I mean, what and where did you draw strength from? And what kept you going at that point? Um, well, first of all, I mean, it was incredibly frightening. Mm-hmm. You know, you think you're, wow. Ah, excuse my life. But, you know... <laughs> um, <laughs> Where did I, I drew my strength from my daughters, really? I had two young daughters, and I just thought, I have, you know, of course, it's, it, I don't feel like it's in your hands. You know, I don't believe in that whole, um, you know, if you mentally think you're going to be fine. I mean, it helps a bit, but I needed all the medication, I needed the operation, the radiotherapy, the chemotherapy, you know, mm-hmm. that is what kept me alive in a way but within that I really I, I I felt like I had to believe in the prognosis you know mm-hmm. um, which was fairly good so I decided I needed to just be given to the sort of sickness of the chemo and all that but every 10 days uh, it would I would feel a bit better and so in that next 10 days, I'd always make sure I would do something really wonderful and lovely to fill, you know, so that, so that I'd be ready for the next bout of being flat out on the sofa. Right. Being very ill. Yeah. Um, I also, you know, I did pray, mm-hmm. you know. Um, mm-hmm. I just 
I don't know. I was just really focused on, how, you know, them saying, right, can you brush your hair now with your arm? And it was the most difficult thing to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember thinking I'll be so excited one day when I can walk to Tesco. <laughs> but it's literally when you are that ill, those are the things you don't think, oh, I want to go and do another film. I can't wait to be on a film set. For me, yeah. it was literally, you know, Mm -hmm. Can I make a cup of tea? Mm -hmm. Going just shopping, like a, like a really mundane thing. Oh, yeah. It's the small things we often take for granted. And I can resonate a little bit with that as well. When I had my operation too, I mean, it's a very minor thing. But, you know, it, it's really weird because at that point, it feels like the world around you is going, it's continuing. But it's like, as well. yeah. you know, you yeah. just think that, okay, everything just stopped for me, but everything else is continuing. So I can understand how difficult that must be. But yeah. at, I, at I think that's why the pandemic was actually, in a way, wonderful, because everyone stopped yeah lockdown well, yeah 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 absolutely no I, I totally understand and resonate with that but since we're talking about time and moving on as well and on a final note Shaheen um what projects are you currently focusing on and uh what is there something that we can also look forward to as well from you um well I did Shekha Kapoor's film I had a small part oh. Of oh, wow. yeah oh, and you goodness. know it was because it was like Shekha Kapoor's film <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah I, I've got a very small part in that and um, oh, that's great. I'm uh, I'm doing um, sort of verbatim thing but not quite verbatim that so the butcher has um, written uh, and it's for myself my daughter Sophie and my daughter Nyla because we're all performers as well so we'll be doing that at um, the German Street Theatre just as a as a play, as a reading with script in hand. So, you know, that is, um, and actually having seen Flight the other day, I almost feel like, you know, who was the actress in Sunset Boulevard who'd sit and watch her old films? <laughs> <laughs> I might turn into that because the film I'd really like to also see is a film I did with Zora, um, uh, Said Jaffrey. I mean, it was again a start. It was called, um, it's called partition, I think. Oh yeah. yes, it yes. was in the. It was like the asylum, you know. Uh -huh. um, I haven't seen that for a long, long time, but I'd love to see that again. Oh wow, that is that is very interesting. Well, I think it's it's just so great, you know, Shaheen. I think um, you know, the fact that we've been able to literally celebrate twenty years of Vendla Beckham together and to hear some of the anecdotes, to hear your craft about your craft as an actor, I think it's it's so wonderful. And I think for me, it's quite a nice wish come true as well because I've been watching Body on the Beach and Vendela Beckham for so many years now and you know if anything I always remember when as soon as I mentioned the title so to have this conversation with you today I'm so so grateful that you could make it so thank you so much Amy. thank you thank you I, I've I mean at the moment I have no big projects or anything but you know that's the nature of an actor yeah, you exactly. Sitting there with nothing, and then next day you, you know, the phone. But everything, it. literally. I, I, even as a journalist, I can again totally relate with that. But yeah. honestly, I think your craft is 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 enough. You know, your your power of work is enough to sort of determine that, and you can always sort of you always uplift that with your craft, and I think that's exactly what matters the most. Well, that. today I was thinking actually, <laughs> I'm I'm uh, I read an article about the Chinese, and they're into something called Tang Ping which okay. is lie flat, which oh. is what I want to do. I just want to lie flat for a while. <laughs> oh, bless you. Well, I hope uh, I hope that goes well for you. And I'm also looking forward to seeing more amazing work as well, uh, be it the play or the Shekhar Kapoor film. So, yes, I can't wait for that. And uh, I hopefully look forward to catching up with you super soon again as well. Take care. Thank you so much. Lovely. Thank you, Shaheen. Bye. 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 Bye.